Quadratic equations can show up in a lot of different ways. Not only do we see it in the position equation in physics, but we can also see it in practical applications when we're trying to discern a piece of information. Here we're going to see a specific type of quadratic equation word problem, which shows up often, the distance rate time problem. So take a look at what the word problem says. Olivia can row 12 yards per hour in still water. Last weekend she rowed 90 yards downstream and then 90 yards back upstream. The entire rowing trip took 16 hours. We need to determine what the stream's current is. So obviously streams move um, with a particular rate. And when you are paddling in a stream, that current can either be helping you along or you're going to have to fight against it. So let's break this word problem down in some key information. Some of the key information in a distance rate time problem is going to be what the speed in still water is. In this case, it's 12 yards per hour what the total distance we've traveled is, and what the total time of the trip is. So let's organize that information right underneath. I have my speed, which is 12 yards per hour. Okay, stay right there. My total distance, well, I went 90 yards each way, which is 180 total yards. And I have my total time, which was 16 hours. Okay. Now, to figure out how this information relates, it's, we're going to have to recall a specific formula, which is basically the rate equation. A rate is equal to distance over time, which we can see in the units accompanied with a rate, which is yards, a distance measure, per hour. However, this form of the equation is not most, the most useful form. It's also true that distance equals the rate times time, if I was to multiply both sides by time, but the one we're going to end up using is actually time is distance over rate. So these are th three ways of representing the same equation, which is the equation for calculating a rate. Now, to organize this information a little bit better, I'm going to create a table or a chart. Specifically, in the, what's going to happen in this chart is I'm going to talk about what's happening in the downstream situation, in the upstream situation, and I'm going to look at each of the distance, rate, and time in those three parts. So first, my distance is pretty straightforward. It's measured in yards, so I'm going to put my units right up here at the top. I went 90 yards upstream and then 90 yards downstream. The rate that I went at, well, in still water, I can go 12 yards per hour. So we're going to have to think about what's happening when I'm rowing going downstream and rowing going upstream. So those are two separate cases. In the case where the paddler is traveling downstream, not only are they traveling with their own rate of travel, but the current itself is also helping them move along. The result is a combined rate. The traveler is moving at the rate that they can paddle at, and the current is moving with it. The result is a combined rate of travel equivalent to the paddle speed plus the rate of the current. And the traveler ends up moving faster. In the opposing case, when the traveler is traveling upstream, they are working against the current. So their paddle rate works against the current. The result is a net effect, which is the rate at which they can paddle at, minus the rate of the current. And the paddler ends up traveling slower. So to sum up, when we're rowing downstream, I'm going the rate that I can paddle in still water, which is 12 yards per hour. And when I'm going downstream, the current is helping me. So I'm going to have to add on the rate of the current. So let's let 
x equal the current rate. Okay, so when I'm going downstream, I'll be rowing 12 yards per hour plus whatever the rate of the current is. And when I'm going upstream and fighting against the current, I can row 12 yards per hour, but then I'll have to subtract off how much the current is fighting against me. This is then where we're going to use our time formula. So time is distance divided by rate. Well, the distance is 90 yards, and the rate when I'm going downstream is 12 plus x. So I'll get 90 divided by 12 plus x. When I'm going upstream, it will be 90 divided by 12 minus x. Once I've organized my information this way, it's hopefully a little bit apparent what we want to do. Since we know the total time is 16 hours, and I know what the time in each leg of the trip was, all I need to do is add up these two component times, and they should equal the total time. So that is what enables me to set up an equation to solve. I'll have my the time it took me to go upstream on the trip, plus the time it took me to go downstream on the trip should equal the total time it took me to do the trip, which was 16 hours. Okay. So from here, so we have an equation. I'm going to solve this equation using any of the methods that we've done to solve. First, I'd like to get rid of all the fractions, so I'm going to multiply by the LCD, which is 12 plus x times 12 minus x. When I do that, I'll have to distribute those values. So this entire expression times the first term, well, the 12 plus x's will cancel out, and I'll be left with 90 times 12 minus x, plus, then I'll have this whole expression times my second term, which will give me 90, and then the 12 minus x terms will cancel out. So I'll be left with 12 plus x will equal 16 times this entire product. Now, since that's a product of conjugates, it's going to multiply to a difference of two squares, which is just 144 minus x squared. Okay. Then I'm going to do some distribution and combine like terms. When I do that, I end up with 1080 minus 90x plus 1080 plus 90x is equal to 2,304 minus 16x squared. It's after I've done all my distributions. So when I combine like terms, conveniently my ni minus 90x and plus 90x will cancel out. So I get 2,160 is equal to 2,304 minus 16x squared. So now I'm going to isolate my variable x squared by adding it to both sides. So I'll get a positive 16x squared on the left-hand side, and at the same time I'll subtract the 2,160 from both sides so that I end up with 144. And then I'm going to solve this equation by applying square roots. Now recall that when you take the square root of two sides of an equation, you have to account for both the positive and negative solution, which will give me two results. So my results are 4x is equal to plus or minus 12, which when I divide both sides by 4, gives me x is plus or minus 3. Now we have to do some conceptual thinking. Does it make sense to have a negative rate when talking about the current? Now a negative is just a sign of direction. So I'm not going to need the negative, because it's just talking about the direction of the current. So my current rate is in actuality just 3, and then I'm going to look back up to recall what my units were, and it was in yards, and my time was in hours, so this rate will be 3 yards per hour. So that's how fast the current is traveling. To sum up what we did in this question, I'm going to go through a couple of steps. First, we, filled, we set up a table and we filled in the rate column. Then we filled in the distance column. And we used that information to fill in the time column. And a question you should always ask yourself is how is distance and rate related to time? 
And the answer to that is that time is equal to the distance over the rate. Okay, after we did that, we used the time column to set up an equation. The equation in this case was 90 over 12 plus x plus 90 over 12 minus x equals 16. So it's the time it took us to go downstream plus the time it took us to go upstream equaled the total time. And then we just had to solve that resulting equation. Okay. Now, not all circumstances end up being a total time. Another example is this case in which a boat traveled 80 miles upriver and back. The trip upstream took one hour longer than the trip downstream. So just like before, the key information is very similar. Only in this case, rather than talking about the total time, we're talking about the difference between the time. So we're going to set it up in basically the same way. When I go to fill in my information, it's the same basic information. The boat can travel at 18 miles per hour. So now my units have changed. I'm talking about miles per hour instead of yards. My total distance was 160 miles up river and back. So I went 80 up and 80 back. That, again, that was my time. And the difference in time it took me was one hour. So I'm not looking at a total, it's a difference. And we're going to see how that affects our information. So it starts off in much the same way. The distance I traveled was 80, and I went miles both ways. The rate it took me, well, recall that to go downstream, I'm fighting against the current. So again, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to let x be the speed of the current. So when I'm going downstream or with the current, I can travel my normal 18 miles per hour, and then the current will help speed me up. Whereas when I'm going upstream, I'll go my 18 miles per hour, and then the current will slow me down. So I'll have to subtract that rate off. And again, the time, which is equal to distance over rate, is just 80 over 18 plus x and 80 over 18 minus x. So now the challenge is creating an equation to represent this information. Well, notice that it said the trip took one hour longer going upstream than it did downstream. Well, longer is a difference. So what I'm going to do is take the upstream time, which is 80 over 18 minus x, and subtract from it the downstream time, and that should equal the difference in times, 1. And then I will go through the solving process in pretty much exactly the same way as I did before, by multiplying by the LCD. Okay, I do my distribution, and I'll end up with 80 times 18 plus x minus 80 times 18 minus x is equal to, again, a product of conjugates. So it will equal the squares, which is 324 minus x squared. Okay. I'll do my distribution and combine like terms on the left-hand side. And when I do that, I end up with just 160x equals 324 minus x squared. Now, notice this is slightly different than the last one because not only do I have an x squared variable, I have a linear variable. So I'm going to have to solve this like a traditional quadratic equation. So I'm going to rewrite it in standard form by adding x squared to both sides and subtracting 324. And when I do that, I end up with the following equation. Which is factorable factors to x minus 2 times x plus 162 is equal to 0, which gives me two answers. Either x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 162. And what do these things represent again? Well, it's representing the rate or speed of the current of this river in what our rate was measured in which is miles per hour. So let's think conceptually, which of these two answers makes conceptual sense? Is my rate moving at two miles per hour of this river, or is it moving at 
162 miles per hour. Well, logic dictates that I would reject this answer and accept the two, which seems much more rational. Therefore, my current is moving at two miles per hour. And again, just to recap what we've done is we filled in our column chart with the rate and the distance. Then we then calculated the time in terms of those pieces of information. We interpreted that information to make an equation. In this case, we knew the difference between the upstream and the downstream times. So we took the time it took to travel upstream and subtracted the time it took to travel back downstream. And that difference was one hour. And then we solved that resulting equation. Okay. So why don't you take a moment to summarize this information for yourself in the small summary chart on the bottom, and we'll go over more examples of this in class tomorrow.